I'm the Hooded Lid and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do my very first Get Ready With Me. I feel like Get Ready With Me is something people who have a large following can do. Someone micro mini, micro mini, micro mini times four. Like me, not as much. But I actually have something I want to talk about. I want to talk about what's going on. And why is nobody talking about what's going on? Let's talk about the coronavirus. I might flash what I'm doing, I might not, but at the beginning, let's start here. This is the Kevin Aquan Etherealist, which is my favorite foundation. And times like this, I think treating yourself, even though I'm not going anywhere, is an okay thing. I shot this video a couple of times and edited it a couple of times and decided against it a couple of times because I wanted to be very careful about getting my tone right. Some people might interpret what I'm going to say as me, and it's not. That's not my intention. But I am dismayed and, there's a hair here, disappointed and confused about the beauty community, why nobody's talking about this. Now, let me just say one thing. The past couple of days, it's been raining here and my phone and internet service went out a lot. <laughs> and last night it went out altogether around six o'clock. I did see, but I didn't see the video, but I did see that Jeffree Star had something talking about the virus and I, without benefit of seeing what he said, I'm going to commend him for talking about it. It's like people will look back from years from now and not even know that something was happening because of the avoidance of what is plainly right in front of us. And it's killing tens of thousands of people. I'm just stunned by the lack of interest in wanting to bring this up. Now, of the people I follow, look how fantastic this friggin' foundation is. We'll take a moment to appreciate it. Of the people I follow, one spoke about it indirectly, really indirectly. And it's still cloudy, so the light's going to be good sometimes and bad sometimes. We just entered uh, Cloudville. Hopefully that will change. She was doing a haul, a clothing haul, and was speaking about the things that she bought and said this will be great for spring vacation and then said, gee, I hope I still get to have a spring vacation. And that was it. It wasn't a direct reference, but <laughs> it was pretty stunning. Now, there's a good chance, I'm not going to mention names, there's a good chance you know who I'm talking about because she's my age and if you're watching me because I'm more mature, you're probably watching her too. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just expressing my great disappointment. It, it just was like, ew, you know what I mean? Thousands of people, tens of thousands of people are dying. And she's seen it through the prism of, geez, it's going to ruin my vacation plan. I believe we can only be disappointed when we have expectations. And we tend to have expectations of people we like. If it was someone I didn't know, I didn't, or somebody I didn't like, it would be, eh, shrug it off. But when someone you like, someone that you relate to in some way, I mean, we're very different, her and I, but we're both the same age, and we both are struggling with that age, um, changing our makeup and our skincare, and all that stuff. We have something in common. When they disappoint you like that, it makes you question your own judgment as well. So it's not just, ew, that was so ugly, and I expected more from you. I didn't even know I expected more from you, but now I realize I did, I do. But how could I be so wrong in my judgment of this person? Now I know this sounds like a lot, but bear with me for a minute. 
I'm going to go into the edit today. I have a theory that most of us watch and follow people that we relate to in some way. That they reflect us in some manner. Now, we're all multifaceted, right? So there's some people you watch because they're funny. You know, I don't follow Jackie Ina, but I like watching her once in a while because she can be quite funny. Do I wear the same kind of makeup she does? No, she goes, you know, pretty heavy with the makeup. Uh, does she have the same skin type as mine? No, but she's someone I like to watch once in a while because she's funny. I watch other women because they're the same skin tone and I'm looking for what lipsticks, what foundations, what eyeshadows, etc. Some because they have the same uh, skin type. And some just because I enjoy them. You know, they don't really offer me anything that's useful to my skin or my aesthetic, but they're fun to watch. There's very few people, I think, you know, there might be one person I watch whose aesthetic is not anywhere near mine and whose skin type is not near mine and who I don't really get her vibe, but she makes good content for reviews. And sometimes it's actually the opposite. <laughs> it's like when they're recommending a product, I kind of know, okay, I'm not going to like that product because everything she's recommended to me, uh, I don't like. And there's people that really, they make the effort to put together something useful, but you just disagree with almost everything they say. Whenever you buy something based on their recommendation, it's a non-starter. But you kind of enjoy that person, you know? Especially people who post on a very regular basis, you know, you can count on them posting, and you kind of make them a part of your life. It becomes a personal relationship that isn't personal at all. I mean, TV is the same way. The morning news programs, that's why they have them on sofas, because you're bringing them into your kitchen, you know? You get the feeling that you can trust them. And it's not accidental. They know that. I have no idea what I'm doing on my face here. My neighbor's out talking to my dog. I usually go out and talk to her, but I feel like I'm on a roll, so I feel bad about that. I think another thing that really disappoints me is there is no shortage of YouTubers who have no problem telling you about their emotional problems. I mean, they're depressed, they're taking time off for themselves, they're going on a retreat, they're anxious, they're this, they're that, they're the other thing. Not one of those people has said anything about the coronavirus. And I just don't think it's helpful to people, especially when the people who are talking are making a very, very nice living, producing two videos a week. Some of them only two a month. Jacqueline Hill only whenever she has a product. I'm not saying that money is a solution for everything. You can certainly be clinically depressed sad, anxious, even though you have nothing to want for. You have a nice roof over your head, you don't worry about paying your bills, you buy clothes, you buy Chanel bags, you know. I, they're not related, but in a way they kind of are correlated. To come out and talk about how depressed you are when there are people out there, a lot of people out there, who are truly paycheck to paycheck. And you're doing so, so well, it seems, I don't know, it's like they're using it as a platform for empathy. But none of them have shown empathy towards anyone who's suffering from this virus. One person I saw was talking about how she had a really horrible cold. And then she, later on in the video, she coughed really hard. And she kept that in the video. That's a choice she made looking for sympathy. I, you know, if you're new here, I had the most horrifying cold for six weeks. I mean, I had a wet cough. I couldn't even sleep without coughing. Um, and I took some time off, but I had videos preloaded. And when I came back, I said, you know, I've been quite sick. I was still coughing, but guess what? I didn't keep it in the videos. I edited it out. And I'm not trying to give myself a prize for not doing that. I'm just showing you an example that when you cough and you leave it in, that is a choice. That's a choice to leave it there. So 
here I am complaining about what I'm seeing and how dismayed and disappointed I am because most of these people I really like and I can't understand why they're not saying anything. And then the day before yesterday, our governor shut California down and that means nobody goes to work unless you work at a hospital or at a grocery store or a distribution or you're a trucker, you know what I mean? A lot of people are getting fired and there are estimates that 2.5 million people will have applied for unemployment insurance and that's just for next week. It will get worse because the next day Governor Cuomo shut down New York and then Connecticut went down and Illinois went down. These are very densely populated places, I'm sure you know, and it's going to hurt a lot of people. And if you're one of them, I mean, be strong. Relax. And that's kind of what I want to talk about. More to the point is, I need to figure out if this is a mat or what. We'll take a chance. I don't want to just sit here and complain about everybody. I wanted to put it out there, but I want to do something positive. And I thought we might talk about some things you can do to help relieve your anxiety. Some of us have anxiety, but we're fine, like all the people I've just spoke about. They're going to be fine. They have money in the bank. And a lot of people do have money in the bank. They're going to be fine. But a lot of people are paycheck to paycheck, and they are scared, and they have the right to be scared. It looks like the government's going to be helping out, but who knows? As of right now, they're still working on it, on a, a bill. So let's talk about a couple of things that we can do to cope. One, sing. I know that sounds weird. I believe whether you have a good voice or not so good voice, it's impossible to be sad or anxious when you're singing. Of course, if you're singing a sad song, stop, but I think it's just a great way to kind of tune yourself, your soul. Whether you're doing it a cappella or you're doing it to uh, the radio or to your own music or your favorite songs, do a little singing. I guarantee you, you will feel better in the immediate. Another thing you can do, I'm, I'm really making a mess out of my eyes here, you guys. Clean. It is spring. It is time to clean. Clean like you've never cleaned before. You know, out, damn spot, out, Shakespeare. There's something to that. Roll up your hands. Roll up your hands. Roll up your sleeves. Get a bucket of hot steaming water and put something in it. And clean your little heart out. It gives you a sense of control and accomplishment to complete something, to have projects. I think cleaning is a great way to go. Organize your closets, same kind of thing, although a little more horrifying. In my case, it would be. Exercise. Now, exercise, because one of the things that I didn't put in this video, because I went on and on about things that I've been seeing at the grocery store and uh, how frightened I am from just going grocery shopping, and, you know, but I, I'm not going to put that in this video. I might put it in another one though. But exercising is a great way to relieve some anxiety. It's good for you. It gets you out of the house, but you don't have to be out of the house to do it. If you have six feet of space, you know, so six feet long, you know, four feet wide, you can do some yoga in your home. I used to just like move my sofa over and because I have my sofas in the middle of the room, I don't like furniture against the wall, and move my um, coffee table over and, and set up yoga that way. And there's plenty of yoga you can find online, and you'll find that if you use, you know, a vinyasa base, you'll sweat like a pig, and you'll clear out your head at the same time. But there's something to be said for going out if it's safe. So don't do the things that I saw in San Francisco a couple of days ago where they were all at the Bay Bridge, I think, jogging right past each other like this. Because here's what's happening. You're jogging, you're exhaling heavily, and you're sweating. <laughs> you know what I mean? You <clears throat> cough or even exhale, and you have it, but you are asymptomatic at that time. You're passing it along. So when you're exercising outside, 
you got to keep that six feet away from somebody and maybe even more if you're doing some heavy breathing or if you see someone doing heavy breathing. I have been known to when I'm on my trail. I'll kind of turn aside because the trail is so narrow I can't necessarily be six feet away sometimes and I'll just turn away so I'm not facing the oncoming person. But the great thing about going for a hike is you make the eye contact when another person approaches you both know. Nothing is said but we know. We know what shape we're in. We know that we're getting exercise because we have cabin fever. We know that it's a beautiful day and we're lucky to be here. No matter what the weather is, it's a beautiful day and we're lucky to be here. And we're considerate of each other. We kind of pass around each other like this. And that feels good. It's a connection with a complete stranger with whom you have something so basic and big in common with. And I think that's a good, good thing. So that's exercise. The last one might be a little scary to people, and I think a lot of people don't do this purposefully because they think they're saving themselves some anxiety. I contend that they are wrong, and that is watch the news. You don't have to watch it 24-7, because a lot of it's repeated. And read news as well, because invariably, cable has to have 24 hours a day of product, right? And oftentimes they package things and replay the same packages over and over again because it's hard to find experts 24-7. But newspapers can spend a little bit more time putting their pieces together and get really good information because it doesn't require talking to someone in person or a camera crew. They can do phone interviews, and they do do phone interviews for, I would say, 99% of their work. I find that news, especially right now, is helping you to slay the dragon. There's a beast out right now, right? The dragon. The more information you have, the less frightened and the less anxious you become. And when I say news, more information, I don't mean the same packages over and over again. There have been so many times in the past couple of weeks where I've seen something on the news and I've already known something else about what they're talking about and can hook the two together and make a call, make a decision, make a judgment on what's being said, where the people who aren't also reading magazines or newspapers are just taking that at the value it's given and they don't know what to do with that information. In this case, information is power. Information is your sword. Information is how you slay that dragon. It will give you a, a sense of control. You won't feel like a victim of the news and a victim of the virus. I feel like if you avoid news and avoid information and just get little snippets. They have more impact on you. If you're like, it's not real, it's not going to happen to me, it's not happening where I live, you're giving it more power. A virus, this, this virus had what they call patient zero. One person started it on the west coast and two people started it on the east coast and it doesn't take much for it to spread. Um, on the East Coast, a healthcare worker lives in uh, New York. She was in Iran helping, came back. She did everything right, she thought. She quarantined herself. All you have to do is get in a shuttle from the airport, and you can expose eight people or whoever, how many people there are in the shuttle to it. Those people get out of the shuttle and expose people they know. In fact, I think that's what happened um, in Washington State. It's a virus. It doesn't care how old you are, what sex you are, what color you are, what your accent is, what, how much money you make, or what state you live in. The states that are getting hit right now are states where people are traveling to and from all the time, where there's a lot of industry. And some of these states have industry that involves traveling to Asian countries. So it's, sometimes it's Americans going back and forth. It doesn't matter. What matters is 
it's highly contagious. And just because it's not in your state now doesn't mean it won't get there because we travel as Americans to other places. And we tend to travel to those places that are hit right now. So more information will actually give you some feeling of control of power and help you to make some decisions. One place I also like to go is my county, LA County has a health site. And I go there and find out who's tested positive and where they live. And that helps me to determine where I'm going to do my shopping next. There are little things that give you a sense of you can take care of yourself while it's still important to connect with others. And I think it's an opportunity for us to see the best of each other. One of my neighbors is walking his dog. I was getting my mail and he's, he said, how are you? Now this is a guy with two kids, one of them about eight months. He's got his hand full. And he said, if you need anything, let me know. And he's not like my best buddy. He's a nice guy that I run into when we walk our dogs. That's the best part of people, you know? And I said, you know what, you too. If you need someone to watch the kids, let me know. Of course, he won't because we're all quarantined pretty much. But that's the good part, if you can see the good part. And I think that's about all I have to say right now. So let's finish up the makeup. I will say this. I, I did this because I didn't want to be part of the hypocrisy that was bothering me so much that nobody was talking about this. And I did want to say a couple of things about the things that I spoke about, for sure. And I know that there is opportunity here for people to judge me and to unfollow me, which I certainly, I don't want that. I'm not judging. But I am kind of judgy, and that is a fault of mine. I recognize that about me, and I really try to rein it in. But right now, I'm just, for the past several days, a week or more, I've been kind of getting more and more angry. Why is nobody saying anything? And that's me. I get that. But I just wanted to offer something to you in case you also are feeling a sense of dismay that people are pretending it's not happening. And I wanted to give you some ideas of, you know, how can we get through this? For uh, other videos in the future, while this is going on, I will probably mention it, but I'm always going to try, I, I mean a goal for me will be to give ideas of how we can cope and what we can do to get through this because we are in it together. No matter where you live, no matter who you are, this is a common denominator right now all over the world. And I'm going to put on a little bit of lip, but I don't know what I want to do. All right, not too bad. I might go grocery shopping today. I might not leave the house, but you know what? I mean, here's something I've never told you. <laughs> I put on my makeup every day. I know there's a lot of YouTubers who don't. They just do it when they're doing videos. I love putting on my makeup. I find it therapeutic. I find it calming. I find it kind of an artistic expression. I, f I just, I love putting on my makeup. There's the look. That's what I have to say. I hope that it was helpful to you. Most of all, I hope that you remain safe. And I think in the next video, I'm gonna hit on what safety means. I've already talked about being six feet away. Of course, you have to wash your hands. Don't exercise next to people. But there's some other things that I'd like to hit on. And I'm just, I'm not going to make my videos in the coming weeks be all about this, but I'm not going to ignore it. I'm, I haven't figured out exactly what, but my hope is to be helpful. And with that, I want to thank you for spending a few minutes with me. I hope it was helpful to you. I hope you come again. I hope you remain safe and healthy and grounded and sane. And we are here together fighting the same dragon. You're not alone, even if you're alone. Until the next time, bye.